My little hat, my little scarf is so cute. Okay, I don't know how how well I'll be able to be heard, but I'm mainly doing this because the ideas in my head are so big that I just have to try to get some of them out. So I ran into a uh, Marxist recently. I'm just going to call him a Marxist in order to distance him from all the idea, you know, all the bad vibes of socialism and communism uh, because he seems very uh, a little bit of a purist in the t- terms of really knowing Marx well and really being able to say intelligent things about Marx uh, and to in some ways differentiate that from uh, China and Soviet Union etc. And I respect that. Uh, I also respect the fact that he's been able to speak with me and think with me and agree with points I've made and seems a uh, seems to be a fairly honest guy, a good faith actor type. Uh, so I'm very interested. And I've been listening to some of his podcasts and I've been talking to him. And I find myself convinced of a few things, but not perhaps in the way he's thinking. So I'm going to try to lay out some thoughts. Um, holy smokes, that was bouncing. Sorry, I'm in a Pinsky moving truck, and every time I hit a bump, it's like being on the ocean in a boat, and it's scary. I don't know what this accent is. It just kind of came out anyway. So, uh, where shall I start? I guess I'll start with capital. So it would appear... Uh, here's the way I'm going to frame it, at least. I'm not going to say this is what Marx thinks. I'm just going to frame it this way. It, it, would, it would appear that uh, wealth is fine. I don't see any uh, uh, logical way of denying that. Uh, ethical way of denying it. Because it's, it's a heap, right? It's not a... You know, the problem of a heap, the... the uh, analytical problem of the heap is there's no way of saying when a heap is not a heap or, or when when it becomes a heap, right? Um, so to bring Ian McGilchrist in then uh, a heap becomes a heap when the right brain says it is which is something gestalt it's a, it's a sense of the whole it's some point at which uh, the right brain says, uh, not a heap, not a heap, That's that doesn't function as a heap. Ah, now you're at a heap. And it's it's also, uh, there's no sudden transition, right? It's like, that's kind of a heap. Okay, that's definitely a heap now. So wealth appears to be that way as well. Wealth appears to be, and it's in relationship to other things. It's more of a, it's not an analytical level. It's a relational level. Now, maybe you could formulate a, a metric, a relativistic metric that keeps track of the wealth of others and then at some point says, okay, you are definitely wealthy. You are now absurdly wealthy or, or um, viciously wealthy, I could perhaps say. And I mean I mean it, and maybe I need to tool this, this term a little bit differently, but what I mean by viciousness and virtue, by vicious I mean those behaviors and actions and states which collectively create harms. They do not individually create harms. There's no harm in a person being absurdly wealthy in isolation. But it is when one person has an absurd amount of wealth in contrast to those around them who have an absurd lack of wealth to the point where they're starving or just suffering, unhappy. Just call it a... I guess I'm almost fine with that. Just freaking unhappy. I'm freaking unhappy because I can't go do things uh, but that freaking guy over there can. Okay, I know that's absurd, but 
you know, it sounds absurd, but there come, becomes a point at which that's kind of a problem. It's kind of vicious, even if it's not eth- unethical. But when when everybody's doing that, when you're you're the one guy, the the underdog in a society of people, and let's 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 make sure all the switches are connected, all the plugins are connected, and let's say that you're a real hardworking guy, and you're smart even, but there's this trap you're in where everybody is unwilling to share the wealth, okay, to to give you an opportunity, and you can't get one because they're only giving you crappy jobs, and you don't have enough wealth yourself to make your own opportunities. All the opportunities are taken, and you can only, no matter how hard you work, no matter how smart you are, uh, no matter how fantastic and brilliant your ideas, let's say you're the most smart guy in the friggin' society, but you can't get a break because everyone else has the the land and the resources locked down and the opportunities locked down okay Um, not a single one of those people is precisely being immoral but collectively they are being immoral and to differentiate the two at that point you have to you can't call it immoral because there's no particular immoral action so therefore, that's what I'm using the term vicious for. It's a vicious society that individual is living in. It's, it's disgusting, right? Okay, now I'm going to plug that into capitalism and Marxism. Um, the idea here is that... Um, sorry, I just saw a guy driving along the side of the road without a wheel, just riding the hub... And I guess he had no way of getting her tire. And so he's just like, okay, I'm going to ruin my wheel, but I got to get down this road. So he was going like three miles per hour down the road on a hub. I wish I could do something about that, but I can't right now. <laughs> and that's interesting, right? That's, that's an interesting conundrum. Uh, everybody feels like they can't help the guy, right? That's part of the problem of our society. That's interesting. I'm going to come back to that, I think. I'll probably have to. It's probably... Jung would call it... uh, Well, apropos is not the right word, but it's apropos that it came up right now. Anyway, okay. So, plugging that into communism and socialism. uh, 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 Capitalism. So it seems to me that there is a heap moment in a society, not not for an individual, but in a society. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. That's that's not the, the idea I was getting to. No, there is a analytical point, a left brain point, to use Ian McGillcrest's ideas, uh, at which the the wealth of an individual is then used in a capitalist way, which means they are not simply using their wealth to have a party, uh, donate it, have fun with it, build a bigger house, uh, but suddenly they are using that money uh, to buy a means of production uh, and, not only that, but employ people. Here, I think, must be the sticking point. It's the employment point. Uh, Now, again, this to me seems ethical, but maybe not virtuous. It may be vicious. And it's not, it it may be neutral at moments too. Neither virtuous nor vicious. Uh, It depends on the society that it's integrated in. Um, Okay, so let's keep going. Um, There's a moment at which a person takes their wealth, buys a means of production, and then hires people. Okay. Now let's say, on the one hand, you have a situation in which people are able to contract with that person uh, in a non-vicious situation, meaning... Uh, they will only do the labor and they can only do that labor in a situation um, 
in which they want to, right? It's not, I'm going to starve to death unless I work for this guy, right? It's, yeah, I'll do it for that amount. Um, sure, no problem. Okay, um, that is at the very least neutral. Now, if the guy is getting less than he deems his time worth, uh, you could call that virtuous. You could call him being virtuous with the amount of uh, pay he is willing to get for the job he is doing. Dude, don't worry about it. You don't need to pay me that much. I'll just, I'll do it, I'll do it for 10 bucks an hour or whatever, you know? You've probably done that for friends who try to offer you money and you're like, well, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll take some money because my time is worthwhile, but no, you're not going to pay me that much. At least that's the situation me and my wife find ourselves in uh, as we, we do jobs for people. Okay, I would put that on the, vir the, the virtuous side. And we do it because we can, right? Because I'm making enough money, uh, we're meeting our bills, we're not suffering, we, we, we could be doing better. It'd be nice to ha have debt. It'd be nice for all our access wealth, ex excess wealth, to be going into savings and stuff like that. Of course, <laughs> savings, what are savings? Is it uh, usury? Usury is the other way of... Uh, okay, that's, that's another thing I need to plug in. Um, so I think I've done a pretty decent job of plugging... Um, my face is probably huge. Uh, I've done a pretty decent job of plugging in uh, where I think hiring out fits on the virtuous to vicious scale and the neutral scale. Neutral would be if, if you can, could truly analyze the situation and find the exact amount that the social situation, this, the whole dynamic, the social resource, you know, available resources in the, the neighborhood, in the, in the region, uh, you know, because, you know, a big part of uh, poor regions is lack of natural resources, and we have to plug that into our equations. Uh, then it becomes virtuous for somebody to invest in that region. Um, you know, of course, ideally is, well, you, know, you, you could say ideally get out of that environment, but of course some people can't and some people won't, um, and that has to do with value. Uh, value is that which somebody values, and it can be completely irrational. Uh, so you have to plug in a theory of improvement. Uh, what does it mean for an individual to become a better person, to become uh, maximally capable of learning the best theories about how to value something, uh, and to be maximally able to learn those things through a, a optimal methodology of learning uh, of structuring ideas into a method which people can learn. Okay, I'm getting way far afield. Uh, I need to reel it back. But all that is interconnected, unfortunately, so I kind of had to go that direction. So where the heck was I? Usury. Okay. Usury is, yes, I will lend you that money so that you can do something. That's virtuous, okay? But the amount of usury you charge can become vicious, right? Um, it makes sense to get a little bit of usury it is basically virtuous, I think, at that point, to charge no interest, okay? I think that's virtuous. That's being freaking awesome. Uh, and it would be awesome if more people would be willing to be virtuous with their wealth, right? Notice I'm trying not to include government in any of this. Um, I think, I believe in minimal government. Um, I believe in communities, though. I think I think government should be minimal in, in the idea of contractual communities, communities united by a well-thought-out ethical structure that maximizes, again, this kind of individual individuation with uh, socialization, so that you have these, these two not opposed, necessarily, you know, you could, well, you, there, there is, I guess there's a the dichotomy there, there's a I hate to use the word, um, what's the term? Um, a, ugh, where they don't fit together. Uh, paradox. It looks paradoxical, but paradox kind of has a, a bad rap, right? 
But it is that a dichotomy, a natural dichotomy. You want an individual to be maximally able to do their own thing, right? Uh, including maximally able to learn what they need to do to do their own thing. But then you also want that individual to be maximally able to connect with this community and to and optimally, ideally, uh, virtuously, I guess I have to say, to be able to help that community because that, that's awesome, right? That's freaking awesome. Uh, it's neutral to do your own thing. It becomes vicious if you're the guy that has everything in the society and nobody else does. Uh, it's also vicious. It's, it's horribly vicious to the point of immorality. That's interesting. Okay, so there's a scale. There's kind of these, these vicious that kind of sucks, but then there's vicious that becomes immoral, right? But you can't call it immoral because it's not, it's not an individual thing. It's a group thing. It's a, it's a locking people out thing. But being, doing so by, you know, what we could otherwise call your personal right. Because I'm not going to give anybody else the rights to your wealth. I'm just going to call you an asshole, right? But at that point, okay, here's where we have to go. Here's what I was thinking. Uh, what we have to do is to make the community larger. We have to start making this idea of a community contract that can wrap around the globe, uh, can include all humanity, and is kind of this group resource thing, right? It's, we want to maximize your capacity to be awesome, to be the best you you can be. We want you to work. We need you to work. Don't be a jerk. You know, carry your weight. Uh, but we're going to give you everything you can, everything we can to do it, you know, to make it sure. Um, you know, and, to, and I think, okay, and here's another thing I have to, pl to plug into this. Oh, I hate this. But it has to be dealt with. There are people who are viciously poor. I'm going to call them sheep. And it may not even be their fault. And I guess if it's not technically their fault, like if you can... Uh, but it's that value trick. Values up the individual. And if your value structure is all screwed up, then you're going to have a screwed up work ethic and you're going to be poor even if you're in a situation. I mean, okay, yes, the situation sucks. There's a lot of usury going on and there's a lot of vicious le uh, vicious um, uh, wages, vicious wages going on. Um, okay, granted, but there are people who could be doing plenty and are still not. And it's because of a messed up... Uh, I'm saying this may be one of one percent. I'm saying they exist. I'm saying they can exist. I'm not saying all at all. I'm not saying that. Lots of poor people are poor because they've been locked out. Like the genius guy that can't get a break I was talking about earlier. Maybe he's not a genius. Maybe he just can't get a break. That exists too. Uh, and that sucks. That's vicious and it shouldn't exist. But I'm trying to say that it, there can exist a person whose, whose value structure is so sucky that they won't take the brakes offered to them. We have to acknowledge that. Okay, I'm gonna call that guy. Uh, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna call I'm, I'm not gonna call him a sheep, but I'm gonna say there are sheep. Sheep and shepherds. I'm taking this from the Bible, and I hate it, but it's a reality. What it means is there are people who don't want to do anything but labor. They don't want to think about anything else. Don't talk to them about anything but I just want to do my job, get my, my money, and have my fun, right? I want to take care of my family and then have my fun. I don't want anything more complicated than that. I'm kind of that way in some ways. I'm kind of a sheep in some ways. And so that's where the, the analogy needs to stretch. It needs to be more than just, um, I'm a sheep uh, or, I'm, or that guy's a shepherd that takes care of people, right? It needs to be, I'm a sheep in this area, but I'm a shepherd in that area, right? It needs to be sheep as shepherds. I'm on my way to taking care of myself on this, but I can't figure out how to do these parts. Can somebody help me, or do I have to do this all by my freaking self, which I might never get that done, right? Uh, there are areas in my life, even if I can Google them, I still can't get figure them out. I can watch a dozen videos, YouTube videos, and I'm just like, what? What are you talking about? I can't do it. Sorry. Um... 
So sheep and shepherds, okay? And then I'm going to call friggin' goats. Billy goats. Have you ever smelled a billy goat, like a real billy goat that pees on himself to attract the gals? Not fun! Okay, I'm going to tell to call billy goats the guys who are not friendly sheep, but are bucking against the guy, the freaking shepherds, okay? Just saying they exist. That's all I'm saying. All right. All right. I got, I went all over the place, and I'm now going to try to pull this all back together. Okay. How you use your capital. Okay, pause. What is capital? Capital is this magic thing that happens with your wealth. When you use that wealth to purchase means of production, and that can be... That doesn't have to be a machine. That can be a, a social structure, uh, meaning you have become, you have leveraged your wealth in such a way as to hire the uh, methodologies, sorry, I'm getting frozen out here. Uh, you've used your wealth to con contract with people, maybe ethically, maybe ethically, uh, to contract with people in such a way that, um, you now have the means of not merely producing something, but running a business, okay? That's that's kind of the next level, right? Uh, I have many means of productions in my garage. I have a drill. Dang it, now I'm burning up. This thing's AC sucks. Um, this, uh, I have drills. I have uh, uh, air compressors. I have a hammer and nails. I have many means of production. Uh, I cannot use leverage those necessarily right now to make money because uh, to get wealth because I don't have the machinery involved in uh, knowing how to use them in in particular situations. I mean, I could yeah, okay. Let's pretend I don't know how to run a business. I've got some rudimentary ideas, but let's pretend I'm completely clueless. Um, we don't have to. We can just talk about the fact that it's not worth my time to try to make money with my hammer and nails, okay? That's a reality. It's not worth my time. I can make money better by working for my boss, who's making a lot more money off me than I'm making off of him, right? Um, that's a little vicious. I'll call it a little bit vicious. He's a really friggin' ethical guy, uh, and he's working ethically within his his virtue, his, his value pattern, okay? I think he's doing a fantastic job. I don't think, good job. I don't think he'll ever hear this video, but I, I think he's doing a fantastic job for what he, what he knows and what he understands, okay? Um, I really respect what he's trying to do. Uh, I've, I've respected a lot of guys. I'm almost teary-eyed because I respect these guys so much. Uh, I love them. I love what they're doing, okay? That's why I would make us crappy ca uh, communist, right? <laughs> uh, so here, but here's, here's why I'm gonna try to bridge going to try to make a synthesis between capitalism and Marxism, or some kind of communism. And I'm going to do it with these sliders of virtue and viciousness. And with this idea of the contract. The uh, let's call it the community contract. But the, the general community contract. Okay? That's a good term. General instead of local. Right? Like, you can have a local community contract, but then you can create this general community contract, which is like this huge union. Like, the superhuman. The, the, the human union. The human union! There you go! We have the title of the, of the, the contract. The contract is an enter, enter into the human union, and the human union uh, is got an incredibly well-built, and, I mean, these, these things are being built right now with... Uh, some of it has happened with John Vivekey's Meaning Crisis work. Uh, that kind of uh, how you figure out values and how you, how you create meaning for yourself, right? Uh, all that is really important machinery for this. Um, a religion that is not religion is important machinery so long as it understands that those tools can also be used by actual religions and it doesn't exclude. And I think, I think he's doing a good job with that. It's evidenced by his conversations with... Uh, Paul Vanderclay and other religious people. Okay. Uh, then there is... Uh, oh, gosh. There's just so many people working on stuff. There's people trying to figure out uh, open source 
um, manufacturing processes and farming processes and machinery, stuff that you can build with uh, open source 3D printers. You know, there's this project to make a 3D printer that can re that can print itself. Um, all these are really vital to maximizing, you know, the human community, this human uh, human union, uh, the human community union, something like that. That's something like that. Okay. Ah, I'm gonna try to pull these together. I swear. <laughs> All right. So embed into this community human human community union. Just call it a. Uh, okay, general, general. I don't know. Sorry, uh, general union, general human union. I like community in there, right? Because I think it has to have a community structure. It cannot be depersonalized and uh, bureaucraticized, bureaucratized. However, that is said, <laughs> uh, it has to be united through people who know each other, right? It cannot be bureaucratized. Uh, I have once heard somebody say that bureaucracy is about the people who knew know how to do it. And if that's all bureaucracy ever was, that would be great, but it's not, unfortunately. Bureaucracy becomes a self-perpetuating, self-protecting process um, that, that ratchets, slowly ratchets up the pricing, uh, uh, the cost of things in order to protect their own jobs, right? That kind of thing. Whereas a virtuous job um, wants to produce, produce the good up until the point where it's not worth producing the good anymore. You know, basically put yourself out of a job. Okay, That's, that should be the job of any business model, putting themselves out of a job. Uh, oh, wow, somebody's doing this better. All right, let's retire and start a new job. Okay. So the, this collective human project, this community-led uh, grassroots... Okay, ha-ha! Now I get to pro plug my project into this. Yes! I have purpose! <laughs> my, my, my project will not be wasted. Um, all right. So I'm attempting a project, uh, which I have a video of. Um, I've called it the Betterment Project at times. Um, but what it basically is, is a methodology for creating uh, a commons, which is that which everyone could conceivably agree with, giving the right uh, advantage, uh, advantage of understanding. Um, so I have to couch it that way, not because I want there to be elite but because there are, unfortunately, people with less ability, right? Now, I a part of the structure is developing ways of, of, of turning all knowledge into common knowledge. Um, okay, that's part of the commons. Uh, you know, the general structure I'm advocating is to create a minimal form of all forms of expertise. Uh, so that what expertise basically is, is an optimal relationship between minimal s constructs. So, you know, what's the minimalist, what's the, the easiest version we can make of this little bit of expertise? Okay, what's the next part that makes that expertise? And collectively you have all these minimal, very easy to understand, you know, YouTube level, DIY level versions of everything, and then you collect that, right? That's, that's an expertise that anybody, given enough time, could learn. Uh, and the idea is to just keep creating summations of different levels. You know, these group of skills can be summarized almost like, uh, gosh, I, I think I'm hyperventilating. I'm so excited. My arms are, are tingling. Sorry. I'm afraid I'm going to get dizzy. Sorry. All right, I'm going to slow it down, and I'm going to try to go back to my main object. So, 
this project, this human collective, no, human community project. You don't want to go collective. Collective destroys the community, and so you need a commons, a methodology producing commons. I'm not going to talk about that here. I've made other videos on that. So, and then you plug in the... The unethical action is that which the individual does. The unethical, vicious... The ethical, vicious action is you being a dork, right? You being a, a jerk. And you should kind of be shunned for that, right? That's kind of what the collective... To a degree. To a degree. I'm not about cancel culture. I'm okay with somebody getting paid to be a jerk if people want to pay them to be a jerk. Okay. If you want to do that. Um, that's. I'm not going to say you can't do that. Just like I'm not going to say you can't be rich. Not even going to say you can't contract with people uh, for wage labor. I'm going to say there is a point at which the society you are participating in, you're participating in a society of vicious, unconnected, um, I guess I'll use the communist version and say uh, bourgeois. I don't like that term, but I'll, 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 I'll capitalize on it. <laughs> I'll, I'll um, slow your breathing down. I will use the term, I'll, I'll, I'll riff off of it, I'll use it analogically, uh, not per se, perhaps as it's intended use, but the way that might use for the situation, and say that the bourgeois are, is a unaffiliated group of people who are collectively agreeing to use their wealth in a way that um, turning their wealth into, ca into to a capitalist business structure that pays vicious wa wages. There's the connection point. Okay. Pays vicious wages. Now, they're doing it in ways that would be fine in other situations, right? Um, if somebody's willing to virtuously take your crappy pay because they're fine, they just think you're, they're like, oh, I, I like doing this job, so I'll take a crappy wage because I don't care. I got, I got plenty of money. I don't care. That's, that's virtuous, right? Uh, it's a virtuous contract. Um, yes, this is going to work, guys! This is going to work, I think. This connects it all together. Holy crap. I'm sure there'll be a problem. I'm sure there'll be a problem. But this, I think this is going to work. Holy crap. Man. Okay. So, right now, here's how we turn things around. We formulate the common human contract. And we, we set up reasonable situations in which it becomes active. Okay? In other words, we're not going to overturn the system. Can't do that. Dumb. Stupid. The system feeds us. <laughs> the system feeds us. We can't break the system. Um, if the food lines break down, the looting begins. The looting destroys everything. And there are no easily obtainable resources anymore. So if, t you know, maybe we can, after 100,000 million people die and we lose the expertise, we regain expertise and we are able to cobble together enough technology to begin uh, obtaining resources again from the world. But all the easily obtainable stuff is gone. It's all hard to get stuff, okay? So you've got to have tech high technology to get the resources at this point. There are resources hanging around, but getting using them is hard. So here's what we have to do. We have to start a contract, build the contract, make the contract, um, 
and say this contract will begin locally in certain areas when certain uh, it'll become active when certain situation certain things are met right I believe something like 98% if this is done right okay this is done right this contract becomes the government itself guys it becomes the government the regulation process itself if it's got the right mechanisms involved the creation of commonality I'm getting myself dizzy again dang it the creation of commonality it's kind of amazing that this is all coming because I started researching communism again that's delicious I love that okay I'm still I'll probably cut these out god I'm getting dizzy holy crap it's not dizziness in my head it's like I'm losing sensation in my leg my arms my wife, my wife would have a complete fit at me right now rightly so all right so the contract becomes the government it takes over the government but it does so only under certain situations right basically voluntarily it basically says we're not taking anybody's job we're not taking over guys we're not going to do it we're going to this contract will become the government when the government says it's time for the contract to become the government we're not going to force it okay but do you understand what it means i mean if we can gear this correctly so that commonality is truly being synthesized from everyone everyone has a say and they can and and the understanding of how the system works i'm just going to talk horribly slow you can speed me up this will go on YouTube the way the contract is geared is that nothing becomes active until it's agreed upon I think that's the best way to do it it emerges so to speak locally it's this crazy nuanced, localized, individuated, and socialized meta contract that does for you what you want it to do to the degree it can, right? Under the auspices of commonality, uh, you know, you're not going to be able to create a commonality contract to become a serial killer problem. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. You're going to hate me for doing this, but I'm going to play with this idea. Let's say you have a serial killer. A, no, not a serial killer. A person unable to stop their craving. A, a Dexter. Let's say you have Dexter. Okay. And you get to a point where the contract has subsumed governments and the all right um, I'll pick up where I was um, let's say this isn't I'm, I, I just I, I want to think through this real quick okay I, I want to see how stretchy this idea can be you have a future state in which uh, this commonality contract has, I like that term, that's good. The commonality contract has taken over at least local governments and federal governments in, under certain states. It doesn't, wouldn't have to take over everything, but let's say it's taken over. Um, and let's say it's connected into um, the the methods of treating people for these kind of mental illnesses true mental illnesses 
Um, and there are people who are either going to live their entire life locked up or have to find a way to, uh, to moderate their impulses, right? This is dark, guys. I know it's dark. I don't like this. But I hate prisons, and I hate locking people up. And I want to do it the most ethical way possible. So what I'm going to say is that there is a contract that could be formed within the commonality contract that allows people, maybe not, maybe not murder other people, that it gives them opportunities to murder, to kill, okay? That's what I'm trying to get to. Ugh, it's, ugh. But, so, this is where it's really commonality, right? It's not my Christian morals. It's not whatever ethical framework you want to call. It's what emerges from the commons. The commons is defined by that which everyone can possibly agree with, given, given a set of standards that emerges as well, okay? The, the standards for commonality itself emerges. Uh, now, I think... I think those standards have to have certain standards. The emergence of the standards have to have certain standards. I know, that's crazy. Oh, okay. Uh, but, man, this dizziness crap. But I think we have to, I'll, I'll, fi I'll, I'll try to figure it out. I'm, it's in the right brain, it's not in the left brain yet, okay? It's, I'm sensing the structure I haven't analyzed it. I haven't been able to articulate it yet. I'll try to articulate it. I'll try to find people that can help me articulate it. Because it would be nice to have help. I don't necessarily want to do this by myself. All right. So what do I need to do here? I think, I think I've run that ex thought experiment to the end of its course. Okay. It doesn't feel ended, but I'm pretty sure it is. All right. So, capitalism and communism. I'm reiterating, I think. I think I've pretty much already said this. So, the commonality contract becomes a... And there could be many commonality contracts, right? I don't want this to become a juggernaut that can become... Uh, controlled and manipulated. Um... I want it to be, so, okay, so, I'll have to think about that more, because there's advantages to a true commonality, and there's disadvantages. The advantages can remain so long as the controls are common, right, are truly common. So, so long as the controls to the commonality contract are common, then the advantages of making the commonality contract singular and not pluralistic, you know, mini contracts vying for your, your attention and your power, your, your, your contractualization to it, um, it, okay, so there's a, there's a ratio, right? Um, the commonality contract can only be as common as the controls of power are common. And I should say it should be easy, easily broken down into factions. But not warring factions, just factions which, which split the power structure. Okay, so as soon as the power structure starts to emerge, which they're going to emerge, somebody is able to very quickly hit the split but I don't know what this is going to look like, right? I'm just, I'm speculating crazily. I'm, I'm in flow mode and I'm riding it for all it's freaking worth. Um, so somebody or a group is able to hit the diverge button, the split button, uh, to ensure that the controls for the commonality contract uh, remain common. And I can imagine there being factions within a commonality contract. So there's like meta levels of a commonality contract. That would be good. 
and where this bridges the gap between capitalism and some form of Marxism, communism, uh, is that you use the slider bars of virtue and vice embedded within the social context of a region, and ideally that region embed, embedded into the the situation of larger regions, uh, you know, so that because every everything's in con, uh, connected, like like we are on planet, we are on spaceship Earth, and this is our only spaceship, and it's our shared responsibility and life support system. It's where we get all our resources, and we collectively own the thing. I think that is fair to say. Uh, there is a level to which we have to admit we collectively own it, uh, because we we collectively own the air we breathe, and the at, the the temperature of the atmosphere. You know, we don't want it to get too hot or too cold. Um, to the degree we have any say on that, I don't know how. I don't honestly know how much we do. I suspect we've contributed to global warming. I don't know how much. Um, but we we rely on the environment, right? If the biology, if the biological systems that support the life cycle of this planet go tits up, we're screwed. So that is a collective responsibility. And therefore it is a collective ownership, right? Uh, uh, it's, it's responsibility and rights together, right? That's kind of what ownership is. Um, the wealth you build and the property you kind of, what would we say? What would we say? Property would then become something like contractual, right? You, your wealth is yours. The wealth you've amassed by your own, uh, either, either through the contracts you've been smart enough to make or lucky enough to make, or through your own grit and will, uh, the will you've, the, the, wealth you've amassed is yours. You contract to utilize land that we collectively own, right? Um, and something like, you know, it'd be awesome if we could say that our currency itself is somehow based, I, I have no idea how this works, but it's uh, one dollar of collective common, no, of, of common currency, let's call it, is some portion of the collective wealth of planet Earth, right? Of, of not only the available resources, but the collective health of the support system, right? Something like that. So that the, un, the more unhealthy the planet itself becomes, the less healthy collective uh, bucks, collective bucks get. <laughs> I forgot the other term I used. So collective bucks, common bucks, sorry, I don't like collective. Common bucks uh, are somehow decided upon by the collective wealth of, maybe it's not the collective wealth, but maybe it's the collective resources, uh, the potential resources and the uh, health of the planet, of the, the, the spaceship Earth. And it's, and it's life support system. All right. That does, that does a lot, doesn't it? I think that's really good. I didn't, just so you know, I didn't come up with all of this right off the bat, but I've, this is plain jazz off of a lot of parts that were half-baked. So they're like all coming to fruition right now, which is pretty awesome. Um, I hope the audio quality is good on this. I guess I can, I guess I can re-record it if I need to.
I feel good about this. I'm, I'm, I've got about 10 more minutes until I get home. I keep trying to summarize, summarize this, and I'm not feeling like I've articulated a good left-brain analytical summation. But I feel that collectively, you are probably getting a good right-brain gestalt of what I'm trying to point out. I'm just going to stop right now because I need to breathe slower for a while. <laughs> Thank you guys. Love you all.